Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about models and applications. So in the previous video, we talked about solving linear equations, but now we're going to use linear equations to solve applied problems. So in this section, we're going to focus on the step-by-step -step strategy for using linear equations to solve problems. So we've already seen that a model is a mathematical representation of a real-world situation. So it can be an equation. In this section, we're going to be solving problems where we must obtain the model or obtain the equation by translating ordinary language of English into the language of algebraic equations. So to be able to translate from a word problem into an algebraic equation, we need to take these following steps. So we're going to use this strategy throughout this entire section to solve word problems. The first step should always be read the problem carefully, and if you have to, read it carefully several times until you can state in your own words what is given in the problem and what is the problem asking you to find. So whatever the problem is asking you to find, that's typically what you're going to represent the variable as. So let x, if you want to use the variable x, or any variable if you want to, represent one of the unknown quantities in the problem. So now step two. If necessary, if there are several unknown quantities, write expressions for the other unknown quantities in the problem in terms of x. So sometimes in problems you might be given information that can help you relate the unknown quantity back to what you've already called x. Step 3 is the most important step of the entire five-step process. You need to write the equation in x. So in other words, your x is the variable, and you should only have one variable when you write your equation that models the verbal conditions in the problem. If your equation is not set up correctly, then your answer will not make any sense. So it's very important that your equation set up correctly first. Step four is exactly what we did in the previous video. Solve the equation, and then answer the question's problem. And then step five, this section is going to be very important that you check your solution with the original wording in the problem and not necessarily the equation that you obtain from words. So let's try this five-step strategy out with a couple examples. Example one, we're going to use the strategy for solving word problems to set up and solve an equation to answer each of the following problems. Number one, 70% of what number is 224? So there are some key words in mathematics that you need to be aware of. If you ever hear the word of, that means multiplication. And the word is means equals or is equivalent to. So let's start with step one. Let's see what we need to represent x as. Well, we don't know any information about what number. So let x represent the number. So notice that there are no other unknowns in the problem, so you can skip step two. So now go to step three. The most important step is to write an equation that represents this sentence. So 70% can be represented as a decimal as 0 0.7. So you can always change a percent to a decimal by taking the percent and dividing by 100. So 70% of what number means 70% times, because of the of, what number is represented as the x is, is equals, and 224. So we can change 70% to a decimal. So that is 0.7 times x equals 224. So this is the most important step, setting up this linear equation that you can use to solve for x. So now the easy step is step four, solve the equation. So isolate the x by dividing by 0.7 on both sides of the equation. And so we find out that x is equal to 320. And that's because we solved the equation for x. So apparently, if you take 70% of 320, it should give you 224. Let's check. So this is the last step. Check to make sure that your answer makes sense. So if you take 70% of 320, 
of 320 is this equal to 224? Well, 70% we know is 0.7. Multiplication is of 320. And if you check, this does give you 224. So 320 is the correct answer for the number. So let's try out a couple more problems now. Number two, when a number is decreased by 30%, the resulting number is 28. What is the number? So let's start off by representing x as the variable that's representing what's unknown in the problem or what the problem's asking us to find. They're asking us to find what is the number. So let x, again, represent the number. And you notice that there's this word decreased by. Well, decreased by means subtraction. This time. So now you have to be a little careful about how this word problem is translated into an equation for the third step. You have when a number, so that is referencing x, is decreased by, well, that's subtraction, 30%. Well, when you're talking about percents, you're never subtracting the percent only. You're subtracting a percent of something. So it's subtracting 30% of the number. So it's really 30% times x. The resulting number, so that means equals, and then you have 28. So this is the important step, writing out what the equation is. You have the number decreased by 30% of the number, because percents always reflect some number and then the resulting number is 28. So let's again change 30% to a decimal. So it makes it x subtract 0.3x is equal to 28. Well, 1x subtract 0.3x is 0.7x equals 28. And if you divide both sides by 0 0.7, you'll find out that the answer is x equals 40. So the number that they're referring to in the problem must be 40. So let's see, if you take the number and you decrease by 30% of 40, the resulting number is 28. So let's check this to make sure it actually is correct. So 40, then decrease by 30% of 40. Let's see, question mark above the equals means do you know if it's equal or not? So 40 subtract 30% times 40, that would be 40 subtract 0.3 times 40. Is this equal to 28? Well, 30% times 40 gives you 12. So this is 40 subtract 12, and that is equal to 28. So 40 is the correct answer. So the number that they're referring to in the problem must be 40. So let's try out the third problem now. This works very similarly. When 80% of a number is added to the number, the resulting number is 180. What is the number? So let's try out this problem by doing the same thing as the first step. Let x represent the number. And that's the only unknown in the problem, is just the number's unknown. And that's what they're asking us to find. When 80% of, multiplication again, of a number, so times x, is added to the number, so add x again, the resulting number is 180, so equals 180. Translate this into a mathematical equation now. So 80% is 0.8x plus x equals 180. And so 0.8x plus x gives you 1.8x equals 180. And, indeed, and if you divide both sides by 1.8, you'll find out that x must be 100. So this one's a little bit easier to check. If you take 100 and you multiply it by 80%, that should give you 80. And if you add 80 to the number, original number, 100, you'll get 180. So this should be a quick check. Check that 80% times 100 plus 100 is this equal to 180. Well, 80% of 100 is 80 plus 100, and that is true. It is, 100, it is equal to 180. So the answer is x equals 100 for the number that's being asked to find in the problem.
So these first three problems give you an idea of how to use the five-step strategy to find a number in a word problem. The next couple examples are going to be in terms of word problems involving functions. But we can still use the five-step strategy to be able to solve for x. So find the value of x. So we don't have to represent x this time. They're telling us x in the problem. It satisfies that f of x is equal to 10x plus 6 and g of x is equal to 12x minus 7. And then where do we get the equation from that involves functions? It's from this last sentence. The outputs of f of x exceeds those of g of x by 3. Well, the outputs are referring to y values. So they're saying the y values of f of x exceeds those. So they're talking about y values again. So the y values of f of x exceeds the y values of g of x by 3. So again, you have to be a little careful on how you set up the equation. Since it says f of x is exceeding those of g of x, f of x is greater than g of x by 3. In other words, f of x is the larger function because it already exceeds the function g of x, and it exceeds by 3. So let's write out what this sentence means in terms of function notation first. f of x is g of x plus 3. So you have to add 3 to g of x to catch up to f of x. So now that we know what f of x and g of x are from the problem, replace them in terms of this equation. f of x is the left side of the equation, 10x plus 6 is equal to g of x is 12x minus 7, and then we have this plus 3 from the equation. So this is the most important step. If this equation is not set up correctly, then it doesn't matter how you solve the equation. You might solve the equation correctly, but your answer won't make sense to the original problem. So it's very important to get step 3 correct. So now solve the equation like we were solving in the previous video. Combine your like terms on the same side of the equation, so 10x plus 6 is equal to 12x. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. Now combine like terms by moving x terms to the same side and the non-x terms to the other side. So I'm going to move the 12x to the left side of the equation. So subtract 12x gives me negative 2x plus 6 is equal to negative 4. And now subtract 6 to move the constant term to the right side of the equation. So negative 2x is equal to negative 10. And now divide both sides of the equation by negative 2, and you find out that x must be equal to 5. And so that is the solution to the problem. x must be equal to 5 for the outputs of f of x to exceed the outputs of g of x by 3. Now let's check this to make sure it actually is x equals 5 that works. So check. Let's calculate f of 5 and g of 5. Find the y value when x is equal to 5 for f. You get 10 times x, which is 5 plus 6. So 50 plus 6 gives you 56. So that's the output value of f of x. The y value for g of x is at g of 5, which is 12 times 5 minus 7, which is 60 minus 7, which is 53. So now let's check. It said in the problem that the output value of f of x exceeds the output values of g of x by 3 and f of x output exceeds the output of g of x by 3. So f of f, f of 5 exceeds g of 5 by 3. So that does check the equation, and x equals 5 is the solution. So let's try out the same 5-step strategy for example 3. Find the value of x that satisfies these two functions this time. f of x is equal to 9 times 3x minus 5 in parentheses, and g of x is equal to 3x minus 1. And they're telling us that the function values of f of x are 51 less than 12 times those of g of x. So just like the last problem, when they're referring to function values, this is also y values. So the y values of f of x are 51 less than 12 times those of g of x. So again, they're referring to the y values of g of x. So let's approach this example just like we did the last example. Let's write out what the equation would be using function notation first, because they're referring to the functions in the last sentence. The function values of f of x, so that's f of x, are, this as an is, so that's an equals, 51 less than 12 times those of g of x. Well, when you do operations in math, you always do multiplication first, so let's look at the 12 times those of g of x. 
12 times those of g of x is 12 times the y values of g of x. So that's 12 times g of x. But then it's 51 less than 12 times g of x. So subtract 51. Less than means subtraction. So this is the most important step. Make sure the equation is f of x equals 12 times g of x, subtract 51. Now go back and replace the functions for f of x and g of x. So f of x is 9 times 3x minus 5, in parentheses, equals 12. Now replace g of x, make sure it goes in parentheses, because you want to make sure that 12 times 3x and negative 1, and minus 51 is outside the parentheses. So now solve the equation. Distribute to remove any grouping symbols. So distribute the 9 through the first set of parentheses and distribute the 12 through the second set of parentheses. You get 27x subtract 45 is equal to 36x subtract 12, then subtract 51. Combine any like terms on the same side of the equation. So 27x subtract 45 stays the same. And then the right side of the equation becomes 36x. Negative 12 minus 51 is negative 63. And now move the x terms to the same side of the equation and the non-x terms to the opposite side of the equation. So let's subtract 36x to move the x terms to the left. That gives you negative 9x. Subtract 45 equals negative 63. And now add 45 to the right side of the equation and you get negative 9x equals negative 18. And so now divide both sides of the equation by negative 9. So x equals 2. So x must be 2 for the function values of f of x to be 51 less than 12 times the y values of g of x. So let's check. Let's calculate f of 2 and g of 2. f of 2 would be 9 times 3 times x, so 3 times 2, subtract 5. Well, that would be 9 times 6 subtract 5 inside the parentheses, which is 9 times 1, or just 9. So the y value for f is 9. The y value for g would be 3 times x, so 3 times 2 minus 1, which would give you 6 minus 1, or 5. You're trying to check when are the y values of f of x 51 less than 12 times those of g of x. So this one's a little bit more difficult to check because we're talking about the function values of f of x are 51 less than the function values of 12 times g of x. So we have f of 2 which is equal to 9. We want to make sure that this function value is equal to 12 times the function value of g, so 12 times g of 2, and then 51 less than that. And so question mark, because we don't know if it's equal yet. Well, the function value of g of 2 is 5, so 12 times 5, subtract 51, that's 60 subtract 51, and that is 9, which is the function value of f. So it is true. So x equals 2 is the answer to this equation. It's when the function values of f of x are 51 less than the function values of 12 times g of x. So this gives you an idea of how to use the five-step strategy to be able to write down what the variable represents, set up the equation correctly, solve the equation, and then also check your answer with the original word problem. So this is a good place to stop our video for the first part of the section. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we finish up our discussion on models and applications.